Hi dears, welcome to the session on brain based learning. Before entering into detail about this new constructive strategy, let us play a game. I will show you some images. You should say the color and not the word. So remember, say the color and not the word. Here comes the first word. Okay, try to say the color and don't speak the word. Here comes the next one. Say the color. The color with which the word is written. Again, the third word. Say the color. Say the filled color. Here comes the next one. Try to say the color and not the word. Is it really confusing? Yes, of course. It's a confusing task and it's just because the left-right conflict of the brain. Our right side of the brain tries to say the color whereas the left side of the brain insists on reading the word and that's why we were confused in saying the color and not the words. The right side of the brain that is more visually oriented is involved in activities such as visual imagery and face recognition. It tends to view information as a whole rather than analyzing individual details. It also tends to process information more intuitively or randomly and is better at visual spatial abilities such as solving puzzles, judging the position of things in space, identifying objects through touch and knowing one's body position. The left side of the brain is said to process information more logically and sequentially. It is specialized for understanding and using language including listening, reading, speaking and writing. It controls memory for spoken and written messages. The right side of the brain controls the muscles on the left side of the body. It also receives sensory information from the left side of the body. The left side of the brain controls muscles on the right side of the body and receives sensory information from the right side of the body. Both these hemispheres are connected to each other by a band of fibers called corpus callosum. Together, they are able to analyze sensory data, perform memory functions, learn new information, form thoughts and make decisions. So as we mentioned earlier, you can see here the brain lateralization. Language is localized in the left hemisphere. And also the left hemisphere controls the right field vision. Whereas the left field vision, it's all concerned with the right hemisphere. Now let us see the major parts of the brain, the physiology of the brain. Here you can see the major parts, cerebrum, cerebellum and brain stem. The cerebrum, it is the largest part of the brain and it is in the cerebrum learning happens. It is the active part of the brain, the powerful part where the higher order learning happens. The cerebrum can again be divided into four lobes, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe and temporal lobe. The frontal lobe, it lies in the anterior part of the brain. The frontal lobe of the left hemisphere has an area called Broca's area, which is discovered by Paul Broca in 1861, which controls articulated speech. Here you can see the Broca's area marked in the frontal lobe. Damage to this area can result in apraxia or inability to make voluntary speech movements. The frontal lobes in general are associated with reasoning, planning, parts of speech, movement, emotions, 
and problem solving. So the frontal lobe controls problem solving, the intellectual activities, attention, judgment and muscle movement. The parietal lobe, it lies to the right side of the central sulcus. And parietal lobes coordinate movement, orientation, recognition, perception, reading and writing abilities. Damage to left parietal lobe can result in ideational or ideomotor apraxia, ability, sorry, inability to name or perform actions on command, and acalculia, inability to do simple arithmetic problems. Next comes the temporal lobe. This lobe in the left hemisphere houses primary auditory cortex as well as vernicus areas responsible for recognition, perception and interpretation of auditory stimuli, both environmental sounds and speech. Lesions in this lobe can cause inability to interpret the meaning of auditory stimuli and when the damage is in the left frontal lobe, pure word deafness can result. So the temporal lobe, it is mainly concerned with visual and auditory memory. And the last comes the occipital lobe, the smallest of all the lobes whose boundaries are not as clear as the other three lobes. Primary visual cortex is located in this lobe and hence it is responsible for processing visual input coming from the body and outside environment. It helps in the recognition of color, words and moments. Brokers and Wernicke's area are mainly concerned with language functions. Brokers area which is located in frontal lobe in the left hemisphere helps in speech production and also usage of grammar whereas the Wernicke's area which is located in temporal lobe in the left hemisphere helps in understanding or comprehending language and here it's clearly marked that the occipital lobe is associated with visual processing whereas the temporal lobe is associated with auditory processing and the moment marked here it is mainly controlled by the frontal lobe coming to the other major parts of the brain you can see the cerebellum it is also known as the little brain this cauliflower, cauliflower like structure is to rear of the brain system with connections of the motor cortex through cerebro cerebellar tract it controls fine motor movements timing motor memory planning of movements and balance and the last part of the brain is a brain stem which contains the midbrain pons and medulla oblongata the midbrain is the smallest part of the brain stem being about 2 cm in length and it is a medulla which contains the nuclei that regulate respiration swallowing sweating and other vasomotor activities <coughs> and that's all with the major parts and functions of the brain and being a teacher it is our responsibility to understand the major parts and functions of the brain and to design activities and strategies for making the brain challenged and to make the learning effective and easy for the students. Thank you.